though. But... I cried more at High Q than I cried at Anahana. You cried? When did you cry at High Q? The season uh, three? Like... What? what? Season three, episode ten? Season How you four? Tsukishima, <laughs> dude, when he blocked. Oh my yeah. god. Season three, episode four. Let's go. Season yeah. three, episode four, minute twenty-three. That's 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 what you sound like. <laughs> Hey everyone, and welcome back to the fifth episode of the Archives Podcast. My name is Didi Mark, and I am here with my co-host, Third PHP. And today we have our first guest, and my God, am I excited for you guys to hear from this guy, because Third and I are both fans of him, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys are fans as well. So please, everybody give a warm welcome to Monitor Comics. Monitor, how are you? How's it going, everyone? Thank you for having me. Hey. I really doing good. Thank you for having me as the first guest. Big honor. Very nervous. Don't be nervous. It's okay. We're a bunch of dumbasses. Uh, you're more intellectual, but you'll feel smart around us. Trust me. <laughs> All right. So in today's episode, we are going to be talking about making uh, manga and web comics. And we're going to talk about, you know, the thought process and like kind of starting off. And if we feel like we might even go deeper to like the process and like, you know, how we can go from the beginning to the middle to the end to where you finally have those pages and everything and yeah i'm really excited to talk about this and we definitely gonna go on a couple tangents we're gonna talk about our favorite animes maybe some manga you know stuff that we've seen recently whatever we feel like it there's absolutely no pressure we want to make it as nice and comfortable for our guest monitor here today because you know if this turns out nice with him maybe maybe we get other guests in the future and like other guests won't be afraid to come on here <laughs> but yeah monitor anything you want to tell us about yourself you know anything you want to say at all uh yeah hi everyone um dd mark did a good introduction um you might know me from youtube i um make comic and manga making tutorials but it can be applied for mostly everything like light novels scripts anything like that um and i'm also a comic artist published at saturday am with my series change the world Awesome. And uh, where can they find you? Like, what is your Instagram, your social? I know you just talk about your YouTube, but like, where can they find you? And where can they find your comic, Change the World? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, but I haven't posted at Monitor Comics. Mm -hmm. And you can find my manga, Change the World, at pilotmanga.com. Yes. And yeah, so as of right now, Monitor is rebooting his comic with brand new art. I'm, I personally am very, very excited. So do you want to talk about that a little more? Like, why did you decide to like change it from what it was before? Because at the time of us recording this, if you go on the Pilot Manga app, you can actually see the old version. And that's what that is, the old version. Um, so talk about why you decided to make that change. Yeah, so I guess I should give a brief overview of what it is for the people that haven't read it. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, so it's pretty much about this boy named Mateo. And um, he just recently moved to a new town with his family. And um, Mateo has always wanted to be an artist. He like always draws in his free time. He doesn't pay attention in class. He's like always like doodling. Um, and he has immigrant parents that are like, they move from another country to um, give them the best chance they have at, like a good education. Dad wants him to work hard, become like a doctor, lawyer, engineer. Those are like the three things I feel like every artist is very familiar hearing. That was like my last story, bro. <laughs> so like, yeah, um, he's been hiding the, his like passion for art um, for most of his life. And he doesn't realize this is something that he wants to do in the future until he finds um, this magical book that has the power to make whatever he draws come to life. That's an awesome idea. Yeah, so why did you decide to like uh, redraw it? Yeah, so um, this story is actually pretty personal to me. Like, I feel like I wanted to represent like the artist experience, like my experience, like my parents were um, a little skeptical about me pursuing art when I was growing up. And um, mm -hmm. I want to like tell a story that can relate or resonate with a bunch of other people in a similar situation. So when I first made the original three chapters, um, I had a monthly deadline and I was still in college and I had a part-time job. Um, so I did my best to like put out those three chapters as best as I could but i knew it wasn't everything that i wanted it to be i knew it could be a lot more like i said the story is really special to me um so i knew i wanted it to have better page layouts better artwork better writing so now that i am graduated university and i'm done with my part-time job i'm putting my all into making it the best i can inspiring Sorry, did you want to ask monitor anything anything you wanted to say uh yeah yeah you said that your manga is personal so i was wondering when did you start getting into you know drawing anime manga yeah so um i've been drawing comics since i was in middle school but like like every other artist i've been like just drawing in general ever since i was little um drawing on walls drawing on paper but i think one of the very first manga that i read was bleach and mm -hmm. the reason i had this was because a couple of my friends were older would put it on tv and we'd watch it and then i found out there was a book for it and i got it and um i don't know what spurred me to do this but i used to like drawing like little stories on paper when i was little it wasn't like a comic it was like a picture book where it's like a fight scene on one paper and then i flip it and then have it like another scene with like people talking um so at one point i was like my little stick figures don't look good. <laughs> how can i make it look like this book in bleach 
So like, I would like put my paper on top of the bleach pages and I would literally trace all the pages when I was younger. That's how I first learned how to like, what's actually going on in the panels. A little better understanding of like how to draw close-ups or eyes because I was literally just tracing it. And so that's how I started drawing when I was um, little. And it's just been something I've always been into. So like when I was in middle school, um, I would draw a lot of storyboards. I never really finished my own like ink final manuscript until like high school. But throughout middle school, I was always drawing like 30 page, like one shots and like all these little like comic stories that are just in pencil. And like I would show my friends and they think it's cool. And um, eventually I got into high school. And I think when I was 14, I put my very first comic on um this weird webcomic site called theduck.com. It's very obscure. I don't think anyone's ever oh, heard. You said I've the duck? Heard of that. Yeah, the, the duck. duck? Um, yeah, yeah, the <laughs> duck. Um, the duck.com. I'll okay. link it in the Discord so you can all check it out later. Actually, I'll just do it right now. But um, okay, I'll find it while I'm talking. But yeah, um, I don't know what I think at this point. Like I was watching YouTubers like Mark Crilly, um, the Rona Project, White Manga, classic, uh, classic. Yep. And um, I was like, people were just posting like manga online and like comic books. So I was like, I want to do that. And like, so I made this story, which I'm gonna link right now. You can see how bad the artwork is. It's okay, bro. We all started somewhere. My bad. My first manga is still out there, even though like nobody knows what it is anymore. And I'm not gonna tell people about it. So I just posted it in the um. You cool. guys, you actually started young, like when you did your first chapter. So yeah, my um, this web comic ended up being I think four chapters. The first chapter was like 45 pages. The second chapter was 22 pages. The third chapter was 19. And then the fourth chapter was 20 pages. So like, I, I think I did like over 100 pages of this story, which I feel like is crazy for a 14 year old. Like Wait, I was on how, how You were 14? I was like, I, was like on, I don't know what was going through my head. I just really enjoyed like drawing comics and like making these stories. So I would just keep making comics like from then on and post them on Webtoon. And then when I was 16, that's when the first summer of manga, or it wasn't yeah. the first opened up in 2016 mm -hmm. back then i think the age limit was 16 because i remember i was 16 when i entered and um got rejected my first year but um the second year i got up got accepted with um my one shot second serving okay. which was an issue 106 so i got Actually, published I remember, I remember that one it's, it's so bad looking back at it <laughs> still a manga though you know at least you did your chapter which is like really hard for a lot of artists like me you know what, like, monitor? I will say at that point you actually did have the right to put comic book artist in your bio. You, because you actually did make comics, man. Like that's the thing. Most people nowadays they don't, they can't even do what you do. Like even people that currently have better art skills than you did back then, they will still like talk about oh I make comics, but they haven't done as much as you did back when you were 14. And that goes to show the drive and like the passion you have for this. Because to be honest with you, if you're a comic book artist, if you really love it you do it like what are you really waiting for oh to get good enough you're never gonna feel good enough monitor me third we all started when we all thought we weren't good enough but look at us now we're like what people will say oh i want to be like you guys but like we all started somewhere so if you're listening and you're you've been putting off your stuff and you have aspiring comic book artists or like comic book artists in your fucking bio and you haven't done shit maybe you should take that off until you do something and that can be a motivation that i earned this when i finally actually draw this chat that i've been planning for years you know but that's just my take you can call it a shit one but that's just my take yeah i actually agree with that <laughs> but <laughs> i find it very appropriate that we have the guests that we have today considering the topic we're going to be talking about making comics so if you're listening you know maybe you're currently making one or you plan to make one and there's some things that you know you find troubling or like you don't quite understand we're going to talk as much as we can about the process and like pretty much how to start and we're going to get questions from some of you guys later on in the episode because, you know, we posted on our stories and we asked for some questions. So we might get some questions from people. And if you yourself didn't send one, hopefully we answer a question that's similar to the one that you have. So, yeah, uh, without wasting any more time, did you guys have anything else you wanted to say before I jump right in here? Um, not really, no. You said everything, dude. Mother, how about you? Nah, I think we're good. All right, awesome. Okay, third, you make you make webcomics. Third, I know you've like thought about making like manga and, you know, you're still young. You, you can still do it. What's stopping you, right? Twenty's is not so, young. You're young. Shut your young ass up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your young ass up. But yeah. I'm youngest here. Yeah. So monitor, I know for a fact you make comics because we both work for Saturday M. And you know, I make I make manga as well. So I holy voice crack. Jesus Christ. I make manga as well. Keep that in, keep that in. <laughs> Fine, I'll keep it in. <laughs> I'll keep Yay. it in. Alright, so since monitor is the guest, he's gonna have the pleasure of going first. Monitor, can you talk us through your process like from the absolute beginning now obviously everything starts with an idea 
So I'm hoping your your stories start with an idea. Can you talk us through as much detail as you want or as little detail as you want? From yeah. the beginning to like the absolute end. Go ahead. For sure. Um, I have a video on this called on um, my five step process for making comics and manga. Oh, perfect. Um, it's pretty much that simple. It's just five steps. Um, but yeah, like mm -hmm. Mark said, it all starts with an idea. So like when I'm thinking of a new comic project, I'll make like a Google Doc and I'll write like one sentence ideas like boy finds book, whatever is in it comes to life or like, mm -hmm anything like that like one sentence ideas and maybe i'll go through like 20 or 30 of them do it in 10 minutes and then you find one you think that's cool mm -hmm. and then that's the one you develop so after you have the idea i like to make like a document for like character profiles i like to think about like the world building a little bit like the power system just so you have a general idea of how the things in your story are going to work still like keeping it brief so each of them will still be like a, like a paragraph, like one paragraph about the world, one paragraph about your character, one paragraph about the power system. And then if you're doing like a one shot, then like that would be pretty much it. And then you would move on to your script. And with the script, it's just like play theater scripts um, pretty much. I, I don't know. Like, I feel like I'm bad at explaining this because it's so straightforward. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's well explained. Don't worry. Yeah. When you're scripting, you're thinking more about like film techniques, like setting and like angles and like close ups and all that and lighting. Um, and then you move into your storyboards where that's actually where you're putting everything together. And I don't know about you two, but you realize that whatever's in my script isn't really working right now. <laughs> I'm going to um, change it up a little bit in my actual like comic with the drawing. Oh, why, why is that? Um, sometimes like you'll write an idea like boy looks out window and then you're drawing it. And you're like, this is so boring. Like I could have him like. Oh, like, I something like interesting. I go through that a lot. Um, for me. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. You're not finished. Sorry. I was going to say like dialogue too. Where like you'll write an awesome line in your dialogue and like your script or something and then you'll go to your thing and you're like oh that's corny as hell i gotta change that <laughs> yeah i see so you're gonna say yeah okay. like how i would do my my scripts is is really different i think because i never really put like like how i would draw a panel i think i just explain what happens in a panel and then i just when i draw it i choose the you know the the perspective and the point of view while drawing the panel for example instead of boy looking out of a window i just put boy is, is thinking about you know what's gonna do for oh, today oh that's interesting um, yeah so i don't literally write what i'm gonna draw i just write what's happening currently in the situation mm -hmm. in, in the oh. scene well i'm like i'm like monitor okay so for example establishing shots i'm sure you guys know what that is right so it's like i like to do establishing shots whenever the scene changes so like the audience kind of know where you know what's happening and usually when i when i'm scripting i'll write um this might be my crude like language this is probably not the proper term for like the techniques that i'm actually drawing but like i write oh top down shot of like the restaurant right so it's like that means pretend like the camera is like on the roof or the ceiling of the restaurant like i'll write that in my script so i know when i'm storyboarding that oh draw this from that angle so is that what you mean monitor is that like kind of what you do yeah i do that like to roughly give me an idea of how it's gonna look but like in the moment you might realize that top down shot's not good enough and maybe you want to do like a shot from the door like looking in so like yeah, it's just like a rough idea that you can change yeah and those those changes are like always good it's not supposed to be final for example i write the top down shot and like while actually storyboarding i might be like well this page just looks too flat the point is changes are always welcome so yeah uh monitor like that's your scripting process what's what's next from there yeah so after the scripting and the storyboarding it's just the inking um and i use clip studio paint like i'm sure most of you do that's the industry standard I feel like right now for comics and manga mm -hmm. and then if you want to color you color and then you just publish it online or however you want to do marketing after that just like that all right third i know you kind of just talked about your scripting you know your scripting process a little bit but go back to the beginning because you're different from both monitor and uh your webcomic yeah Talk see, about your process yeah well it's really different for me because i've never actually uh worked on my story oh, yeah. completely i've always been an illustrator for a webcomic i never wrote it myself so my process is really different because since i work with brandon chen he just sends me the scripts and mm -hmm. i just draw what he wants me to draw you know for example uh the way he scripts is the same as you guys actually because you can see like so he always writes um, panel one we see a, an overview shot of the characters in, a, in this scene you know in this specific place and then I just I just draw that but sometimes I change it uh, yeah. to how I, I want it you know I was about to say that yeah yeah <laughs> because um, Brandon really gives me the creative freedom to change the perspective like if I can make a scene better more creative he's gonna let me do it but then again we always we discuss about the changes but that's the, the gist of it for me though, since I'm right, currently writing it right now. I was about to say that, yeah. You, I know you're working on something. I'm now. a complete beginner because I've never <laughs> Okay, funny, I never studied, you know, the terms for like screenwriting. Like, you know, the overview shot, the focus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I never did that, so um, you watch like writing YouTube? Yeah, I mean YouTube video. 
No, I I actually watch a lot of tutorials how to write a story, like a compelling story. You know, like mm-hmm. the the wants and needs, the philosophical uh, conflict, the external and internal. Okay, that's know, good. That's good. I I know all of that. I've actually managed to to use those theory in my story to make my story a, a little bit more interesting. But then again, if you if you read my scripts, it doesn't even um, look like a real script. It's just it's just me explaining what's happening in a scene. I think and, that's good. Oh. Um, can I interject real quick? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so something I didn't mention in my process is something called like a, a script outline. Mm. Um, and I'll do this sometimes where it's what you're saying. Instead of writing character dialogue, I'm literally writing boy wakes up, boy leaves house, boy goes to school. And like yeah, that's exactly. the idea of what's going to happen in that chapter. And you can flesh it out later if you want. But like that's also a way to go about it. So I don't think that's necessarily wrong. Yeah, yeah. no, that's, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Especially with action. I think I think when you're scripting, personally for me, uh, when you're scripting, you go into this kind of zone, at least for me, where like you're almost in there. Like I'm almost in my character's heads while I'm writing. And like whenever someone comes into the room and like stops me from scripting, it's very hard to get back into that same type of zone that I'm in. So like when I'm scripting like stuff like action, it's like I'm literally detailing what's going to happen in the fight because the fight is happening in my head. So in my script, like for example, oh, metal, like Metal Souls, Kane throws a uh, left hook. The masked man dodges and uppercuts it into a stomach. Like I'll write it that detailed and like even go crazy like the way, spoiler alert, in the most recent chapter of Metal Souls, a building came down. I described that in way too much detail on like Wait, how the really? building will come down. Yeah, you like I do that personally for me. I'm not saying that's the right way to do it. But at the end of the day, if you're not working in a team, your script should be tailored to you. It's different if you have an artist that you're sending it to. You want to make sure that it's clear for the artist. You understand? Yeah. But for me, I don't really care about how neat or messy my script is. It just matters that I can understand it. But yeah. I did, talking about that chapter. Sorry for the tangent. Yeah. Um, that, I forgot the, her name. Captain Sarah, I think. Yeah, she's kind of mm-hmm. sus. Dude. She's kind of sus. Uh, yeah, she, she, she's, she, sus. she's supposed to be yeah. sus. She's supposed to be yeah, sus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the way she talks about, uh, like, about okay. Kane. Man, uh, you have some and, weird shit. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's not, you know, look into deep. I don't want people to think it too hard about it. So when, you know, when we reveal happen it's not you know they didn't see it coming but whatever uh <laughs> so, continue with your process scripting yeah, mm-hmm. going back to me being an illust- illustrator for brandon chen most of the illustrators when they see the script they storyboard it first and then ask for a confirmation to start drafting the actual episode but for me i storyboard and draft at the same time my so my storyboard is like already detailed so my assistants can just line uh, my storyboard right, right away i don't have to actually it's like it's i think it's the same for you guys you just you use your storyboard and line it right away yeah that's so what i do you guys yeah you don't even have to draft the storyboards so i think that's yeah. the that's the fastest way to do it what i used to do is thumbnail sketches while i was scripting so like i'll make like one sheet of paper and then have all 30 pages on it at the same time like really tiny like maybe one inch by one yeah. inch or whatever it is like for the paper size and while i'm scripting i would like draw a little tiny sketch right next to it with a stick figure or something and like dialogue balloons because when you're scripting if you're writing like panel five and the actual page you don't even know if you have room for a panel five like yeah. so i try to keep like a little like thumbnail sketch next to me just so i have an idea what it might look like so yeah that's just something i wanted to add okay yeah that, that's cool because i i thumbnail sketch too i might be a little crazier than i don't know maybe what third does but like i go from thumbnails or like stick figures straight to inks and that sounds outrageous but i've done it before the last two chapters of metal souls there wasn't like any like sketches i went from like stick figure thumbnails straight to inks and third knows this because when we get on call sometimes like i you know i want to share what i'm working on and i'll like share my screen and i show my thumbnails like just one page with like 30 different like boxes in there like you know supposed to be the pages and i'll tell third oh this is this page and this is this page from then i go straight to inking so most artists and i do recommend you do this don't do what i do because doing what I do, it's 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 a little crazy. I'm, I don't know how I do it. I'm not going to recommend it to others. I just blow it up on Clip Studio because, you know, I'm digital. And I just go straight to inks. Yeah. If you don't have any deadline set for your chapters, mm-hmm. you can take your time on it. But again, if you're published on a company and you have to actually publish one chapter a week or a month, you have to do shortcuts, you know. that's uh, I think that's the way to yeah. do it. I mean, yeah. So, okay, now that Monitor and Third have, you know, spoken about the process, I won't talk too long because I want us to talk about more stuff so the episode doesn't feel too long when we get to the other stuff that we do want to talk about. Uh, so my process is, I have an idea, obviously, 
and then like monitor i write it down in google docs i have google docs filled with many many ideas and like if i wanted to choose one i go back to the google doc and i just look through mm, what do i feel like doing so for example third is working on something a web comic that he's going to do all by himself so he's the beginner at it i'm currently working on a little project i don't know if i'm allowed to say ah, whatever it's my project i can say it i'm working on something and it's literally just one of the ideas that i've had before uh so i'm gonna do it and maybe third and i might release on the same day we don't know we might make it an art cast thing both mm. of our stuff yeah, we don't know. Yeah, maybe like an Arcast Patreon exclusive. Who knows? I don't know. But um, yeah, so I start with an idea, put it in Google Docs. When I'm ready, I take the idea, expand on it, you know, world build, and then I move on to scripting. You know, I already spoke about my scripting, so I won't go too much into that. So I script, and then after I script, I uh, thumbnail. So I'm pretty sure both of you guys said that you actually write the panels, like, oh, panel one in your script. I don't do that. I write my script like it's a movie script. There's no panels, literally just dialogue, dialogue in bold. I write what's gonna happen in the scene like oh kane walks into a barber shop then his name then he starts speaking oh right? yeah that's how i that's how i write that's how i write like a movie screenwriting yeah exactly exactly i don't put the panels in my script and then like i should start doing that because sometimes when you're like writing the panels out um you might make a scene too short or longer so when you're yeah. actually doing the storyboard draft you're like i want to extend the scene like at least three pages to make it longer so if you weren't scripting the panels in the first place and you did what you did where you're just telling the whole scene then i feel like it flows better yeah it allows for more like or less rigid thinking so like you said it allows the the panels to flow better so what i do is after i fully scripted a whole chapter during the storyboarding phase is when I break up what happens in each page. I then move on to the stage where I bring in my storyboards and blow it up for each page and then straight up start inking. And after inking, it's, it's done. For Metal Souls, after inking, I go back again to page one, then I tone everything all at once. Toning is fast, so it doesn't take that long. I can tone 60 pages in like one day. But the project that I'm working on right now, that's like my side thing, it's a different art style, so there's no toning. That's, there is toning, but not as much as Metal Souls. So literally, as I make each page, it's done. So that's just my process. But yeah, I don't want to take too long on that. Really quick, though, I thought it'd be interesting because I wanted to hear from you guys, and I'm sure the listeners as well would want to know. A monitor can answer first. What are you guys' biggest challenge? Or like, what is the hardest part of the process for you? Like, what is the hardest to get through? What is the hardest mentally? You know, just what is the hardest part for you in the process? Um, For me, I think I spend the most time on the storyboards. Mostly because that's when like your idea is literally coming to life. Like, you're making something from nothing. So sometimes I'll like draw a character and it's not actually how I want them to look, or like I'll draw a scenery and it's not how I want it to look. So I feel like that takes the most time, or like they don't speak the way I want them to speak. Um, so yeah, I think for me it's definitely storyboarding. Okay. Okay. Third, how about you? For me, it's not it's not the most difficult. It's the longest for me. It's the uh, it's lining. Inking, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, ink panels take me so much time. Do you guys know the, the panel I've done, like on God Game, where oh, we see... The, the, the see... fire one for the monkey on the floor? Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole sketch and line art took me an hour, 30 minutes, but the coloring only took me an hour. Um, you say, wait, you say an hour, 30 minutes, like that's like long, bro. Just chill out. Y yeah, <laughs> okay. I mean, if, if you think about it though, there's 60 panels, so I'm like inking 60, you know, inking 60 panels for like 60 hours and then i still have to do the coloring coloring can take me like can yeah, be yeah. fast because that's just cell shading but lining uh, a panel especially if your style is if it has to be clean you have to take your time on it and i really hate doing a clean style yeah i started doing a clean style too it takes me like twice what it usually does but like i'm not trying to be clean yeah but yeah for me my hardest is same as monitor storyboarding it's for me it's like it's the most mentally draining not necessarily because it's like boring because it's so much like it's the most thinking that I feel like I do. Yeah, when I'm scripting, it's like I'm in the zone. I'm enjoying myself when I'm scripting. I'm in my world that I created. I'm in my character's heads. Like it's fun. And then like um when I'm drawing, it's like I'm not thinking. I'm just like inking. It's like it's almost like fun challenge. Maybe sometimes me it's like a perspective is hard. But like, you know, it's fun to tackle those. But storyboarding is like you're thinking. How many panels do I want on this page? Do the panels flow right? It's just a lot of thinking and it's like really draining. Like, I hate that part the most. Every time I have to storyboard, I dread it. But, like, you need to storyboard. Uh, it's so, so rewarding, though, when it's done. Yeah, when you, yeah, when you finish, yeah. when you finish and you start inking, like, you know what's going to happen or you know, like, maybe this cool panel that you planned later. Uh, so, like, I'm just thinking, I can't wait to get to that page when I get to ink that or draw that. That's just me personally, though. So, yeah, it is It is really fulfilling when you finish. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess, I, yeah, I'm going to change my answer that to um, storyboarding. <laughs> Now that I think of it, yeah, it's it's actually taking so much time. Like it, it's been three days 
for me since I started my my drafts slash storyboard mm -hmm. and I still haven't finished it. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. Um, okay, I know maybe we're dwelling too much here on this like making comics thing, but I feel like based on our three processes, you know, you pretty much have enough information with how maybe you should go ahead or go about like, you know, making your own. Obviously, you don't have to do exactly what we did, but I feel like you have enough. But I do want to know, because when Monitor started talking, literally when he started with the idea part, you know, a question came in mind and I wrote it down here because I wanted to ask. Monitor, when you have your idea, or like maybe you're in the stage of like you're fleshing out the world building and like the characters maybe before you before you script do you have your influences in mind um yes so i'm a very visual person so i like creating like little proof of concept um before i even do anything i might not even post it like i had a few for change the world that like got scrapped but i like to like have an idea of what things are going to look like so um I think the biggest influences for my manga series right now, um, for the coloring style, it's um, very like reminiscent of like light novel covers. That's what I'm trying to go for at least. Yeah, um, I yeah. really like, like Konosuba and like the um, Ride Shield Hero covers. And then for inking, I have like all of these volumes of Dr. Stone right next to me. Um, oh, W. I mean, okay. that, that, that's where the improvement came from. I've yeah, started. I saw that, dude. Holy shit. Um, so yeah, I really like Voichi's style with like laying out pages. Um, mm. Yeah, definitely the best reference to have yeah the best reference to have what about you third do you have your influences in mind when you like come up with your stuff well when, when it comes to art i guess yeah currently my my biggest inspiration is dan dan's art w yeah i've all i always look at the the panels when i do my stuff and for writing i i don't have really inspiration right now because i just started doing it so my main inspirations are the theories of making a story no, that's so, good. That's good. That's so good. yeah, it's it's like when I started drawing, my main inspiration are perspective, anatomy, mm -hmm. you know. But <laughs> yeah. since I know my fundamentals better now, I I don't have to think about that, you know. I yeah, that's good. Yeah, personally for me, I I definitely do have my influences in mind. If you're listening, I recommend that you do as well because it can help you like make like changes. For example, sometimes I ask myself, what kind of story is this? right and that would lead me to like okay what kind of art would be best suited for this type of story so for example let's say i was the author of change the world which is like monitors like story it doesn't make sense to like draw change the world have been drawing metal souls you know the art style doesn't like it doesn't work best you could definitely do it there's nothing wrong with it but it doesn't work best and it's kind of like i made this example in one of my youtube videos where like if yusuke murata drew chainsaw man it'd be awesome but chainsaw man would feel very very different right what makes chainsaw man chainsaw man is the art the gritty art style and the side project that i'm working on right now my art style is very different from what you see in metal souls because this story needs this art style the art style in metal souls is not suited for it if that makes sense uh, i have my influences in terms of writing as well because what kind of story do i want to tell right if i want to tell like uh you know a slice of life type thing maybe i don't want to be thinking too much about like you know tatsuki fujimoto's story writing that might be a little fucked up right <laughs> maybe i want to think about how like the stories are told in like anime like um fuck what's this? this anime that i really like is a guilty pleasure uh modern you probably know it. uh masamune is uh, masamune revenge or some shit like that but Ooh, that is kid... pleasure it's awful i i loved i love that anime but i, I don't tell manga, people but it's awful <laughs> I, don't, I don't even i don't even know that it's just like this fat guy gets hot tries to get back at this girl that like oh okay it's like, so that. bad the anime is even worse yeah but i love it i've watched it like two times already and i plan on rewatching it which reminds me monitor i'm rewatching charlotte now because you told me you watched let's charlotte go, too let's go. <laughs> i watched episode one last night and i was like holy shit this is just as fun I'm yeah sure there's at least two more charlotte fans out there somewhere watching this wait 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 wait. Char okay, okay monitor how would you rate charlotte i thought it was good up until like the last three episodes yeah Bro, sir. same same bro i i i watch a shit ton of anime before i started drawing so yeah, yeah charlotte I, i've always praised charlotte because uh, a lot of my friends don't like charlotte none of my friends actually like it because they thought i mean okay the ending was okay i mean what happened in the in the end was like in shambles you know it's kind of confu not confusing yeah. but just i feel like the idea was there yeah but... it's so yeah, the, rushed. Idea, the idea was definitely there it was just rushed for sure for sure they but yeah. yeah go ahead third finish finish my bad uh no, no don't worry but yeah well, i gotta um, ask third are you coming from angel beats like did you watch that beforehand uh, i i watched i think angel beats was the first romance i've watched a uh, drama yeah, the same creator as charlotte oh really oh yeah Mono, you told me i it's on my list now i'll probably watch it after i finish charlotte again because i remember watching angel beats the first time i did not finish it because i was watching it with my brother it was so sad i had to leave because i didn't want to cry so really? uh it's sad yeah, it's like, bro 
Yes, it is. Really? Yeah. Angel Beats is sad? Monitor, what the fuck? I'm gonna go into it thinking he's gonna cry third. I didn't I didn't mention that to him. Holy fuck, there. Uh, Monitor, why would you tell oh, me shit. that, man? I'm so sorry. Is it, is it as bad as the... God, I forget the name. The one with the Anohana? ghost girl. Yeah, Hanohana, yeah. Is Anohana it, it, made me cry like a bitch. I don't think. Yeah, it's bro. Is it sadder than Anohana? No, uh, yeah, it... Anohana made me cry like a bitch. But I was, yeah, I was in a bad spot that moment. But uh, um, no, I think Angel Beats is is good in terms of plot. But it's the ending that's sad, you know. Um, but Anohana okay. is is sad throughout the entire <laughs> anime. Yeah, it is. Okay, okay. Okay, perfect segue. Perfect segue because we plan on asking this. Monitor, we gave our shit takes last episode. What are your top five anime? It might be a little tough question on the spot, but I want to know because you're a man of culture, man. You be like, hey, Mark. <laughs> do you know Monitor commented on on our latest video? He commented he, he he put the top his top five anime and manga list. He did. Oh, yeah, yeah, he did. Then I heard Diddy Mark say something, and I was like, I'm going to the comments right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me open it. Let me open it. Okay, okay, oh, I got sorry. it. I got it. I got it. I can screenshot it okay. to you. Awesome. <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm, I'm looking at. I'm looking at it now. I'm looking at it now, dude. You. Okay. Kaku, okay. All right. Let me not. Let me not spoil your list. Monitor. I want you to say your list first, and I can say my comments based dude. on what I've seen here. Yeah. Bro, I, I want to say, say my comments too. I did <laughs> a little bit of everything for my anime one. So for the fifth place, I put something recent that I watched, and it was really torn between Vivi and um, Odd Taxi. I thought both of those series were phenomenal. I would probably give it to Odd Taxi in terms of plot. I thought that was so original um, with how they handle everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then for fourth place, I have Kaguya-sama Love is War. I just finished the latest season. That series... W. W. Mm -hmm. That's not Dude, I, I fell off. I fell off like in like season one. Does it get better? No, it gets better. It's the, it's like one of the best uh, take, comedy and, romance. Yeah, after, after Kaguya-sama, I have Steins Gate. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. That's my boy. That's my boy. Oh, mm -hmm. oh man. Um, and then Mob Psycho 100. And Another then, one? IQ is my number one. No, oh, right. You know, we're not, we're not, we're not going to talk about that. I take uh -huh, it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, we do. I, we do. I, take, hey, yo. I take it back. <laughs> Bro, okay. So, okay. Just for me, IQ season, no, season three. The season three was so good. I really watched that three times. I couldn't wait for season four. So I read the entire thing till Damn. the end. I heard the yeah, manga. No, yeah, I was hooked on IQ. I caught up to it and I stopped because I literally caught up to it. Like I got to season four. To spoiler alert for Haikyuu, if you don't want to hear this, but like the the tournament in like the big auditorium thing, I got to like there. You know, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, the the yeah, last yeah. season. Yeah, the last season. I, I I guess I was last season. I caught up to. It, I really liked Haikyuu. I said that I thought it was for girls because I really only see girls like putting it in their top. And that was just me. I'm not. I still love Haikyuu. I I ride or die for that show. But... I cried more at Haikyuu than I cried at Anahana. You cried? When did you cry at Haikyuu? In season three? Uh, it was like... 24? What? Season three, episode 10? Season you four? Yeah. A goddamn episode? Fucking <laughs> Tsukish Tsukishima, dude, when he blocked... Oh my yeah. god. Season three, episode four, let's go. Season yeah. three, episode four, minute 23, that's that's, that's what you sound like. Right? <laughs> oh, man. Bro, okay. So like the end when you see Ushi Ushikawa, right? Uh, he, he's like trying to beat everyone. Bro, that's that's like intense okay, that, that, was a, that was a W moment. I'm not gonna lie, that was a W moment. Yeah. That was a w moment. Yeah, but I yeah, she must I block. Think, yeah, Haikyuu has some of the best um character focus and like Hello, character moment, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just such okay. a ride. Okay. If you're not into sports, I see why you might not be into it. But I think the, you don't need to be into sports to enjoy it. Yeah, yeah let you me don't. tell you I this don't right now. About volleyball. Bro, I love volleyball. Yeah, that's bro. what I'm saying. I don't even like yeah, it. That show made me want to play volleyball. volleyball bro. because of Haikyuu. Yeah, yeah same. want to play volleyball too. Yeah, it did make me want to play. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, and then I tried it. I got. I, I sucked so much, I quit. Um, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you know a show that I, that I forgot about that I wish I put on my list? And I, I'm one manga as well. Fucking Prison School. If y'all if y'all see me, oh, yeah. oh, it's just, yeah, it's just degeneracy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just degeneracy at its finest. And, and, and I love that, that fucking shit. One big guy get bigger and bigger every <laughs> half. <laughs> the point he's like the size of a tower in like one of fucking the episodes. Andre, yeah, dude. That show is I've watched that show five fucking I'm not even lying, five times. And a manga, this one is dead. Do not look up this manga if you're not over the eight. Like fucking Nozoki Ana. Have y'all read that shit? Oh yes, sir. I've read the other one by him yeah. too. Yes, I came in. I came in for the titties. I stayed for the story, bro. That's just me. Bro, bro, that's that the... got deep for no reason. <laughs> that shit got so deep, bro. I like was depressed. <laughs> like reading, I was like, oh man, this is kind of rough. Yeah, I, I came in like I thought this was like gonna be like some freaky shit, and then I was just like, hey, yo, somebody cared about the characters. Third, have you read this? No, not not at all. I, I, no, I dude. Equal, um, Nozo X Kimi. They were like ticks on my anime list. <laughs> new character. It was like new characters. 
Is it good? It's a, it's a sequel series, um, but oh, it's, it's, not, it's, it's trash. But like, you know, oh. if, if you enjoyed the first series, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll probably enjoy it. All right, W, W, I'll, I'll check it out for sure. And you also have your top five manga list, Mother. You want to you say that out too? Yeah, so I put a bunch of different stuff here. Um, Nana, um, my favorite shoujo manga. I think the anime did not do it justice. Really deep series, um, really cool artwork. Um, goes into a lot of like adult topics like drug addiction, suicide, and really? things like that, which I didn't think like shoujo manga did. Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty interesting to read. Um, number four, I put on here. No one has ever read this for some reason. Kamisama no Itori. It's called As the Gods Will. Oh, I've never actually heard that one before. I think you yeah, like cool the art because it's really cool. There's only been a live action movie, but it's been really bad. Oh yeah, I it, see. Oh, it, bro, I know this one. I saw go. this. Yeah, 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 bro. I love the story. It, bro, it's it's like um. Make sure you've read it. At least Alice in Borderland kind yeah, of, yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Very so good. I lo- really? I, lo- I love, I love the it. Ne- is the Netflix show Alice in Borderland is like similar to the manga? Is it very different? Uh, I did not watch that. I, I did not I, I watch the that. show. It was a very good adaptation, to be honest. Yeah, I, I like, I love that show. Oh, I love oh, that show. that's surprising though. That's surprising. It's Japanese. Yeah, because Sweet Home adaptation was awful. You didn't like Sweet Home? I, yeah, Sweet Home wasn't good, but I, I like like monster, like shit monster stuff. Wait, yeah, bro. Sweet Home is Korean though, right? Yeah, when they, yeah, but there was a Netflix. Um, yeah, true. Um, when they played Imagine Dragons yeah. in the first episode, bro, you think that was good? <laughs> nah. <laughs> I was like, I was, why? Yeah, that, that caught me off guard. Yeah, in the Korean show. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, lie. Show, um, All of My Friends Are Dead was another webtoon that got adaptated. You don't like that? One? I love that oh, one. I, I love that. It was, one. I know. So I heard of that. You didn't like I that one? I don't rant about that. I thought it was so bad. Oh really, dude? I, I, at least the general consensus was like people liked it, so they're making a season two. But yeah, I personally I like. But I like zombie stuff, so maybe I'm a little biased. But maybe yeah, I like zombie. Me. Yeah, me, me too. Me too. I like zombie stuff too. Mm-hmm. I just, um, I just don't like I, the I, idea of like people getting superpowers. Like that was the weird part to me. With um, yeah, all my I, friends. I, get, I, can, I can get that. I can get that. I feel like people would be fifty fifty about that. I like, I kind of like the superpowers because it makes things, it kind of makes things different. Because like, what's the difference between all of us and dead and like most other zombie shows? Well, the superpower thing. That's like how it stands out. But I can understand. I've definitely spoken to. I think it was my sis- I made my sister watch it and she didn't like that aspect either. But yeah, um, can't can with your list monitor. Sorry to cut yeah, you off. Number three, I have Boca Rano. I don't know if any of you have read that or heard of it. Uh, let me check. Oh, cool. Trash Taste talks about it sometimes. I saw I third talked about this in our first episode. I think it's a better version of even no, 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 it's Bacano, not Boca Rano. Oh, Bacano is what you talk about. Oh, no, I've never, yeah, I've never seen Boca Rano. I have seen Bacano, but I'm dead. Yeah, Boca Rano is like. <laughs> Bro, I saw that shit on your my anime list. You, you put it oh, yeah. on eight. <laughs> oh yeah, this is this is the one where the kids like it, they either fight the aliens or drive the aliens or some shit, right? So yeah, it's like a mecha series with like it's like Evangelion like the setup, but it came out before it I think, um, where like aliens are coming down like every week or whatever, and each of these kids has to pilot the um, mecha, and like they don't really have a choice in it, um, so all of them have to do it or else the world's gonna end. But like the twist is that whenever you pilot it, you die after you get out of it. So holy shit, like, each of the kids knows that they're gonna die. But they have to do it. So like each chapter, you just keep losing more characters, and like oh. after every arc, oh, and like man. it's really depressing towards like the end because like what what do you do in that situation when you're last in line, but you got to watch all these people dying in front of you, and like they're all your friends, and like it's kind of fucked up. I, I remember tra- I remember they, they like about like trash taste. Yeah, it sounds like guns too, and trash taste sold that to me. I remember when I watched that episode, I was like, damn, I'm gonna check that out, and I guess I never got around to it. But damn, damn, it sounds like Gons too. Like the third is right. Number two, what's your number two? So, this manga is very old. School Rumble. It came out in two thousand two. Um, very, very old. Do you remember? <laughs> Have you seen it? No, it's just you said two thousand and two is very old. I'm like, is that? Bro, is that yeah, yeah, I'm old. I'm old. I was born in two thousand two. I'm old as fuck. Bro, you were born in two thousand and bro, chill. Two, 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 two thousand two. Yeah. Yeah, like there's an yeah, and I'm after that. Thousand. Yeah, I'm yeah, dollar, an bro. <laughs> that, maybe that was weird hearing the and. Yeah, there can't be an and after that. There, come on, now. that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Right, but, I'm um, looking at looking at this. This this does look a little older. But yeah. um, the thing that I like about this is like this was like one of the first like um slice of life high school stories that like I feel like a lot of anime these days are trying to like make popular again. Um, and this show had so many. Like, I think it had like over 300 chapters. It was like a really long running series, and there was like absolutely no plot. It was just like these kids like doing stuff to hang out and like have fun. Is and, there an um, anime? Yeah, it got so bizarre. Like this anime, like holy shit! Was, like, I'm I think one of the most this. iconic episodes is like they're trying to decide what to do for the school festival. So they come to a decision between like a haunted house and something else. So each of the classes is like, well, okay, we gotta like do something about this. So it's like a battle royale. So like they all get like airsoft guns and like break into the school. <laughs> and it's all the classes like going at each other with these guns. And like, it's, 
just so like wacky and out there. And I think this is a big inspiration for like my series Change the World. Cause I just like that idea of like like teenagers like having fun yeah, and like, yeah. like that's my favorite like genre of like anime. Like more than like the Naruto shonen like stuff. My favorite genre of anime is like slice of life school stuff. Because for me, it is just pure escapism, bro. Like I get to leave my boring gray ass life to watch these goofy like fucking cartoon kids do all types of shenanigans that I wish I was getting into when I was young. It's my favorite, personally. So yeah, that that I'm definitely gonna check that out. I just wrote that down in my list. At some point, I'll probably check that out. For sure. And then last one's kind of obvious, Attack on Titan. Yeah, I mean, I think I have that too, you know, it's on top of zero, but we're not we're not gonna talk about that. It's, yeah, uh, I think a lot of people it's too good. On it, but I just think Ooh. it's peak writing. Like, no, it's too good. Because of the ending? Yeah, I, I can see now. the ending, but like, I feel like, People who get mad at the ending forget all of the other expert writing that he's done this entire time. Yeah, that. exactly. Okay, no, okay. I think I think it's because of this. The writing is so good. They they want the ending to be like more than perfect, you know. Mm -hmm. But since yeah. the ending is actually decent, but since the the whole manga is per like almost perfect, they think that the ending is shit compared to the the whole of the manga. And it, and it makes me mad too, because there's so many series like these isekai ones that'll never get an ending anyway. Yeah, so like, that is why are you true. giving like all these isekai series like a nine out of ten, but like you're complaining <laughs> about Attack on Titan when it's been peak fiction for right, like Ryder. all these that's years. A, that's a good segue. What's your favorite isekai? Ooh. I love isekai. I love isekais, um, bro. I I, I would make that. I love isekais, bro. You would have been a good guest in my recent video where I talked about isekai. Then. <laughs> I, I didn't know isekai. you were into isekai like that. I love isekais, bro. I kind of mm. stopped. Kind of stopped laughing a little bit, but like I, I want to get back into it. I have two. I think okay. my favorite right now is Mashoko Tensei. Mm -hmm. um, oh, bro! <laughs> okay, I was about to. That's the one with the the, the grown ass man gets born, reborn to so, a little kid. Yeah, it's got Sakuga animation. Like every episode's amazing. Every episode's intro is like an exposition shot showing you the world, and it's completely different. Every it's so good. Um, the story is really good. The characters are really cool. But a lot of people get turned off by this because they're like, well, we've seen Isekai before. But oh, what people don't realize is this story is so old. Yeah. yeah when the, like, I think really? One of the very first Isekai stories that like popularized. Before Sword Art? Before Sword yeah, Art? Yeah, it was before Sword Art Online. Deadass? That's crazy. The anime wow. for Sword Art Online came no, out first. No, no, like, for real, the novel was uh, out way before that. Wow. I saw I saw that Mushoku Tensei uh, inspired a, a shit ton of Isekai that got adapted before. Yeah, exactly. And like Mushoku Tensei was very late in the game to get it adapted. But I'm glad Glad that they did it right when they did mm -hmm. it. Don't I think it's holy shit. Yeah, I, lo I love hey, these guys, bro. Oh, my favorite isekai. I have, I have two. I have uh, what's it called? Yeah, Sword Art, Sword Art Online, season one, season one. It gets hate. I don't give a shit. That enemy still makes me happy. Sword Art Online season first one. Four episodes were good. Yeah, the first, the first few episodes until like Asuna <laughs> got introduced. <laughs> yeah, until Asuna got introduced. Yeah, yeah, for me it was when Asuna got introduced. Things not yeah, got weird. Yeah, exactly where like it fell off. <laughs> yeah, it got weird. There was like a little. They had a kid. I was just uncomfortable, but whatever. <laughs> um, but I really do love Sword Art Online. I remember how I felt when I first watched it. So that and um, fuck, what's the name? Of? Oh, I like slimes. So I guess I have three. I like oh uh, yeah, slime. Me kind of slime. W W is a guy. And nice. um, holy shit, this, the one that I was gonna say, I fucking forgot it. What is it? Did you watch um Sword Art Online Progressive? Is that like new new? It's a movie, and or I, I think it's a movie leading into a series, but they're redoing the season one, so it's only focusing on the first world. So like ah. instead of like skipping ahead, how they did like skipping bef between like floor levels, I think mm -hmm. they're doing it like going one, two, three, four. Like that's what they need to do. Cause like yeah. that's the that's not the light novel. That's when it was good when it was like focusing on that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I liked I liked for me after like they left Aincrad is the first play. After they left Aincrad, I was like shit ain't the same no more. I um, wanted to see more of Aincrad. I feel like we didn't yeah. get to see more of it. I, like there was there was consequences in that world. Like you died in that shit. You died in real life. That was, I know. Like, I thought that was cool. I would watch like ninety episodes of that. Like yeah, I don't exactly, care. exactly. Yeah, that's what I liked the most. Oh, that, it looked I, good. The music's so good. It looked good. The music looked good. The anime the animation looked good. Like the visuals, they still they still look pretty good today. Here. Yeah. Third, what's yours? What's yours? Uh, well, I have two, maybe three. Um, the first is The Rising of the Shield Hero. Um, oh, W. Yeah, I actually like that one. I haven't watched, I think the season two came out. I haven't watched it, but I actually like the season one, especially the story. It's, um, it's Overlord and Iseka. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah, yeah I think it is. Overlord yeah. is. Overlord and the, the third one, this is just because I'm biased about this anime, but um, No Game, No Life. I like it. I like that. I've never, I've never, I've never, I enjoy that too. I've never yeah. seen No Game No Life. Um, but yeah, I remember I wrote it down because I, I didn't want to forget again. My my third favorite is Konosuba. That's a, that's a Isaka, right? Oh yeah, that's a yeah, funny Konosuba. one. Yeah, yeah, Konosuba. I like that one was actually that shit was actually funny, bro. It was they actually funny. The um other series, Combat Until Be Displaced or Dispatched by the same creator that got an anime. 
have you checked out that one it, yeah it, it it's not an anime? as good but it came out before konosuba like like oh, really? one, so oh, yeah it, like okay. it konosuba none of you yeah. said redo of healer i can't believe this nah bro, i had to watch that shit bro my my nah. cousin told me to watch that shit we watched it together i was like bro bro i finished no. all 12 episodes but um i'm also caught up on the manga <laughs> but um is it good have, no no but what i have to say is the light novel art is like phenomenal Mm -hmm. That's the only thing it's got going for it. Wait, wait yeah, what, of course, of course it's good. Of course it's good. Wait, what, is that, good. What? what is that degenerate? What is that degenerate fantasy show that they got they got taken <laughs> off of Funimation? <laughs> Mono, you know what I'm about? What is that fantasy show that was like really degenerate, bro? Like something you got taken reviewers, off of right? It's a show yeah, 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 yeah. I tried. Did you guys try that one? I've read a couple chapters. I didn't get into it. No. Uh, yeah, I tried watching the anime. I didn't get into. it I'm like. Wasn't this like praised? I was like, maybe I'm the only one that didn't like it. I don't know how that ever got passed. Yeah, that that was that was a little too much when, when I watched that first episode. But <laughs> okay, uh, okay, that's a lot of anime talk. That's a lot of anime talk. I know we still have questions to go over, but I feel like it'd be a crime if I didn't ask you know the YouTuber amongst us this question. Monitor, can you kind of just talk about like your YouTube journey? I personally really like hearing people's like YouTube journey and their growth. I remember the first time I heard uh, Connor talk about how he became like you know what he is now, and that was just crazy how it's. When you tell the story, it seems like they go from like nothing to like where they are now, right? And obviously, Monday, you're not like where you're not at like millions like the way those guys are, but you are you're you're, you're big, you're, you're big. I just want to hear your story, like what inspired you to start, what kept you going, because I know YouTube is really hard. I feel like some people don't really understand how hard YouTube is. So kind of just talk about that as much as you want or as little as you want. Yeah. So um, I used to use this as a bragging point that I had like forty five thousand in only two years. <laughs> But my channel just did three years now, so it's not as impressive. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I started this channel, I think, when I was in, I had, it had to be in college. So yeah, like my second year of college. And um, I always grew up watching YouTubers, like I said before, like White Manga, Mark Curley, um, Ethan Becker, Ross Draws, like all these art oh, yeah. YouTubers. And um, what I always liked about them was like, it just felt fun knowing other people were doing art, you know? Cause like when you're drawing at your table, like you're alone, you're doing your own thing. But like seeing all these people having fun drawing and talking about their stuff, like that's really inspirational, especially when you're like a little kid. And so a lot of the content that I watched when I was younger was like related to comic and manga stuff because that's what I was trying to learn how to do. So like White Manga made videos, Saigami Project made videos, Mark Curley back then made videos about comics and manga. But mm -hmm. like if you look at any of those channels now, you could tell that like since they're like older now that like they started migrating away from that. So. It's more like just general art stuff, art challenges. Everyone's doing crane games. It was just like stuff like that. So there's like obviously videos about like how to write like novels and stuff. But yeah, I feel like there was never anything specifically about creating comics and manga, especially right now. It is still, um, it is still, it is still hard to find, to be honest with you. Yeah. So when I was in college, I was like, man, like white manga really helped me out when I was younger with like him talking about his series and how he's doing it. And I was like... I feel bad there's nothing out there right now for anybody else that wants to watch it. And like, I was working on my own comic and manga at the time. So I have to say like, that is a part of it that like, um, how am I gonna grow as a creator and grow, get my comic out there? So maybe I record my journey. So that's where I got the idea to start a YouTube channel where I'll learn about comics too. Cause like, like I say in all my videos, like this doesn't all just come from my head. Like I've seen over 400 videos or I've seen over 400 animes. And like, I grew up like reading articles about how to write stuff and like watching other YouTuber videos about how to write and like draw. So like, I felt like I wanted like one central hub where people could go to make comics and manga. Um, Cause like I said, there wasn't anybody doing it right now. So that's how I started. And I experimented with other videos like um, Pokemon Fusions. I tried um, tried some live streams, tried a bunch of different videos. Um, that's good. That's good at your experimenting. Yeah, and what I realized was people wanted the comics and manga content. And I saw, like, at first I was like, well, I want to do other things too a little bit. But um, mm -hmm. a lot of the comments, like, I think my first video has 39,000 views. And then my second video has 33,000. And then my third one has 21,000. And then my fourth one has 44,000. Like, they were just blowing up for no reason. Yeah. And they were like five minutes long. And um, people in the comments were like, man, I really needed this. I'm like, thank you. Like, this really helped me. And like... I'm working on my own comic and it's good to know that there's other people like making comics and like people started meeting each other in the comment section. Um, one of the most important things with YouTube is like engagement. So building a community where people like enjoy talking to each other is like a big thing. My videos might've been helpful for some people, but like they can go to the comment section and there's like a hundred other useful information that people are adding. And you didn't mention this, or I found this in an article, or I read this in a book. And so you just have all this information in one spot. And um, I think that's what really got me my leg up early on. Um, yeah, I call those guys the know-it-alls. The guys who just go in my comments when I make a video and like add way more shit that I didn't add. I mean, I say that like nicely, like I'm not saying like the, like an insult. The know-it-alls will come in and make like the, put in a comment like, oh shit, that's kind of nice that people can go in there and see that now. Um, like, but yeah. Actually. 
Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but monitor, really quick, I just want to know, because I'm personally curious, what was, like, your video? Like, what was, you know, the video that kind of, like, gave you that crazy growth? Because I remember there was a point in time, at this point I was following you, where, like, it seemed like every day you were posting on your story. Thank you for 25,000. Thank you for 30,000. Oh, my Thank God, you. it was crazy. What, what, yeah. what video was that? Or, like, what, what videos were that? Because, like, so, yeah. That, Cause I'll be honest, that stuff that happened to you, that's what inspired me to make my YouTube channel. Because if you, if you, I don't even remember, but like a week after that, like you had that period, I hit you up asking for advice because that was just so crazy to see. And so, tell me what video was that? Like, what videos were that? Like, tell me what happened. First off, I'm glad that I inspired someone. That's always cool to hear. So, thank you for watching my stuff. I know both of you watch my stuff. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. No problem, bro. Um, so. I think the very first video, well, all of them were kind of blowing up little by little, but the biggest one that I'm looking at right now from three years ago was my How to Make Successful Shonen Manga, and that was 116,000 views right now. And yeah, I feel like most of the market and like the demographic of people who want to make comics and manga are shonen fans. So that's obviously like what they want to hear. So that's why it's a yearly series where I talk about shonen manga, because one, it's my biggest series, and also new shonen mm -hmm. manga comes out all the time so like in the first part i talked about like the big three like one piece naruto bleach and then in the second one it was more modern stuff like jujutsu kaisen demon slayer and then like as new stuff comes out like kaiju number eight and sakamoto days that's smart yeah um i think my best advice for people starting out on youtube great i was i literally wrote that down as a question awesome you already go ahead say that go yeah ahead. um is the engagement so mm. I try to create like a genuine connection with my viewers, not parasocial. I'm not, not like that. Yeah, 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 um, yeah for sure. <laughs> I mean, like, I, early on, I think I told both of you this when you were um, asking for advice about YouTube. Um, reply to every single comment, especially early on. One, because it helps with engagement and like people like to see, like YouTube likes to see that you're engaging with your followers and that's what brands like to see. And two, you're helping someone. So like they took the, they took the time to watch your video. So like, yeah, if they took the time to watch it, yeah, I'll text back or I'll reply to their DM or I'll like mm -hmm. talk to them, like YouTube, you know? Um, so that's the biggest thing. The second thing is the title and the thumbnail because that's the very oh, yeah. thing that people are going to click on. For sure. Um, if people know what Google SEO is, it's like keywords and like the importance of it. So how you like title your video and like present it, like it dictates how it's gonna do. But the engagement is the biggest thing. And the other thing is just consistency. So like that can mean uploading once a month. Everyone knows you're gonna upload once a month. So that's consistent. Yeah, like yeah for sure. Every for week, sure. everyone knows you're coming back every week. Um, mm -hmm. Consistent meaning like what you're posting. So like my stuff's like mostly comics and manga. I started branching out into more things like tablet reviews, which don't get that many views, but I like to like get into that market where I'm like talking to these companies and like they want to work with me, working with conventions. Cause that's also stuff that I do. And um, Oh, man. Yeah, staying consistent with like branding. So like how you make your thumbnails all match. Also, yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at your channel right now, dude. I'm looking at so, your channel right now. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, um, branding. I majored in graphic design in college. So, like that's how I learned about branding. Like how you present yourself, like really sets you apart from other people. So I try to present myself in my videos as like someone who kind of knows what they're talking about. Um, <laughs> and like when you're starting out, you're probably asking yourself, why would anyone listen to me? Especially if it's like informational content. So you have to learn what you want to do before you can teach someone what you want to do. So like, like I said, mm. I've been comics for most of my life. I've been like reading these things anyway and like watching these YouTubers. So like I had a good understanding of like how to make a comic. And then I was like, how would anyone, like why would anyone just listen to me? Like, I think at this time I was like, the only thing I had going for me was like summer of manga I was in. I had um, a comic strip published in a magazine. I think it was called Search Magazine. I won two awards for like a one shot thing I did. And then like, that was like about, but I was like, oh, maybe people care about that. Like maybe people want to get in a Saturday AM. So like that was my big thing for a while where it's like, I'm that YouTuber who was in Saturday AM. And then like, you just build up from there. It's like, oh, now I'm published. And then I work with companies and like, I have tablet brands that I work with. And so you just scale up from there. So um, branding is very important. Yeah, that's, that's all very great advice. That's always like very, I, branding is very important. Like I try to, I try to do it myself. If you look at my channel, it's very obvious because I didn't go to school for graphic design. I took, I took a lot of graphic design courses on Skillshare. I used to get the free memberships and I canceled before it got expired. And I took oh, uh, I got one right now. Yeah, exactly. Use my coupon code in my description below. <laughs> yeah, w plug, W plug. But yeah, I, I, I took a lot of courses on uh, Skillshare. One of them was for graphic design. So you can see on my channel that I'm obviously trying to do that. The only successful YouTuber that I can think of that doesn't do that is uh more critical like he doesn't give a shit Pro Z D. Yeah, yeah exactly like for the most but for the most part though even dudes like mr beast there's like a general like you know there's a general brand they have like when you click on their started stuff, that whole see. trend with his thumbnails yeah exactly, his exactly. Title. yeah he started the whole thing yeah 
But third, I don't, I don't want you to feel left out. I feel like you haven't said anything in a, in a while. What do you? I wanted to say something earlier, but I completely forgot. Oh, oh yeah. man, I'm sorry. Bro. You're like third? Like, how did you, bro? You have like hundreds of thousands of like followers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, like, you must be doing something right. So, can you tell us about like <laughs> how you like present yourself? How you okay, look? Again, I always, I always tell this to people. I got, I just got lucky. There was this one time. <laughs> You're being too modest, bro. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not kidding. I got lucky um, because it, it all happened at, at the same time, in the same moment. Two years ago, I think I hit 1K followers on December or November. And then I started doing commissions, you know, on Twitter. And that's when uh, I think I got a lot of connections with um, content creators. Like, I mean, small content creators, like YouTubers who have, who have like 50,000 subscribers. And then suddenly, I think Voice Me saw that I was doing a lot of commission work for um, small creators. So I think they they DM me and they ask, "Hey, yo, um, we have this light novel on our site. It's called God Game. Do you want to do a trial um, to be a?" Wait, hold on, hold on, third, third. I didn't want you. I didn't want you. Told the story before. You know right, right? Wait, really? Oh yeah, yeah. that's true. Monitor, oh, yeah, right? Okay. You listen to the episodes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got a funny story that I can add for fresh content. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it was this. So third, working on God Game was really interesting um, because when I was 16, before I even had my break with like Summer of Manga, was Saturday AM. Brandon Chen um, hit me up um, to work on a webcomic project, but this was when Brandon was like grinding on everything. He had like five yeah. stories he was doing. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. oh man, this is hype. And like we were working on a one shot and like he had the script already. I was doing the character designs, um, but that's when Summer of Manga happened. So I was like, Brandon, I'm so sorry, oh, but shit. this opportunity is oh. coming with Saturday AM. I gotta like back out. He's like, nah, it's cool, it's cool. So it was really cool seeing how far he came since then. And then I heard that Third was working. And I was like, oh, that's such a small world that um, now Third and um, Brandon are working together. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon, I remember, I'm the only one Brandon didn't hit up because, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm not that great. But I'm joking. I remember I really <laughs> wanted to work. I, I really wanted to work with Brandon before Saturday AM because, like, you know, he was just like this big guy. I remember Third was already working with him then. And Third and I were like kind of friends then. And third was like telling me, yeah, go for it, hit him up. We definitely want to do something. Like, yeah, like you know, you're good enough, blah blah blah. And you know, Saturday, you know, Saturday M happened. I just never got around to it. So yeah, Brand Brandon, Brandon is that guy. He he's yeah, he's that guy. Um, but yeah, just cut the just just cut the moment when I started talking about my life. No, it's fine. I want third. I wanted I wanted you to I wanted you to um connect it. Like, cause the question question monitor asked was like, you know, how exactly did you get such a huge following? Right. Yeah, Obviously, okay. you post good drawings. Like, connect it. Like, um, are you? Were you trying to say you piggybacked off Voice Me? Is that why you, you know? Go ahead. Um, well, I I guess so. Yeah, um, Voice Me technically carried my whole career, um, <laughs> really? um, and also um, I remember when there was this boom in my account on on Instagram. It by the way, all of this uh, happened thanks to TikTok too. TikTok. Um, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. TikTok like I think boost my followers to like thirty to forty percent on Instagram. But on TikTok, I posted this one video of me making a, a manga page. And I think I went from 1k followers to 10k in in two no not even in three hours. Fuck. TikTok really? crazy. I hear the algorithms insane. Yeah, it's so I, so, so I, I got like I, I got so happy, but I remember telling myself uh, that was a fluke because on TikTok usually when you post something it's it's like one out of ten chance your video gets popular unless you're really creative or really funny. So I started posting more there and Thanks to thanks to TikTok, I got my followers there to Instagram too, but not everyone. But I think on Instagram, the reason that I have these numbers right now is because I had a lot of connections with smaller uh, Instagram artists. I, I remember meeting Haru when I only had 800 followers. I, I, I met Mikey at the same time. I met Elias Art at the same, you know, we, we had the same amount of followers, but I think it's easier to grow um, together compared to trying to grow like by yourself. By yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're me and just comes in and just like joins the friend group with my fucking 800 followers. That's what I do. Huh. <laughs> well, that's yeah. how like, networking is. Cause I think I first saw third yeah, networking. Action during like one of Kree's or someone else's live streams. And I was Free like, manga, oh, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, remember yeah, our that's, first stream together? how you guys met? Is that how you and uh, Monitor met third? I might have been in the comments during that. I, yeah, I remember. I remember okay, I, okay, I remember when, when Monitor first came to our stream, I was like, Bro, Monitor is here. What the fuck? Uh, I didn't yeah. know. Like, it was Monitor got fat boys. 1,000 followers on Instagram. And I'm like, oh, why did they, like, what? I was so, I was, I was shook. 
So yeah, um, yeah, I, monitor, I, I, monitor cars don't matter, dude. Like when you when you come into when you come into stuff, but you got that respect, even if your Instagram numbers don't show it. Like your YouTube channel is like spoken for itself. Yeah, exactly. I remember during the pandemic, I was really like lost. Like, uh, bro, I don't know how to make manga, so I just look it up on YouTube, like how to how to write manga, and then I saw monitor and he was so good at oh man just the videos were so good I, I i was instantly hooked and isn't that an amazing feeling monitor like that's literally why you started your channel that's yeah. literally why you started it that's so surreal every time yeah. you tell me that or like commented i just it's hard like you have imposter syndrome i feel like yeah, I, don't know yeah. I, have, <laughs> I always have that yeah it happens to me too it happens to me too people tell me i inspire them I'm like me because i know me i'm a dumbass I'm, 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 I'm a fuck up i fail it's like how am i People have told me like, bro, you've like changed my life or like, bro, like you inspired me to like get my book out and now like I'm public and I'm like, oh my God, I'm literally just in my bedroom. It's a little, yeah, it's a little scary. It's a little scary. But yeah, as fun as this episode is, cause I'm having a lot of fun. I'm learning a lot from both of you. Um, I don't want it to run too long, but we still have questions and I'm sure there are some good ones. So yeah, third, what you got for us? And third, what is the question that you typed up on your story before we start reading what people sent in? What was the question? Oh. The question I ask to my followers is, do you have any questions about getting started uh, on your manga or webcomic? And we got a lot of questions actually. And can I pick the first? Yeah, go ahead. Pick the first. And monitor, monitor, you're the guest, you answer first. Yeah, mon monitor is more suitable to answer this That's a this lot of pressure. Question. I'll do my best. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Then. What's the biggest difference between doing illustration and comics? I think comics is, well, the way I think about comics is it's a sequential artwork. So you're trying to tell a story, even if it's just one page, you're trying to tell a story with it. Um, I think DD Mark mentioned this in another video, but like you can't hide behind your like, um, what you can't draw, I guess, or like what you mm -hmm. can't do right now with comics. So like you have to draw different perspectives, backgrounds, characters. Um, so with an illustration, you can get away with hiding those hands behind the back or like, you know, <laughs> putting a smoke that's conveniently in front of like the hands. Um, so I think with illustration, you're just trying to like put something out there, I guess, because like there's so many different illustration types, so I won't really get into it. But um, with a comic, you're trying to get a story across or some kind of message. Good answer. I I, I don't have anything to add on that. Do you yeah, have there's, anything? There's literally nothing else to add. Like he perfectly said, even me, Mister Talk a lot. There's nothing to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah. All right. Did you have another question in mind, or do you want me to pick another one? Uh, you can pick. Uh, can you pick the second one? I'm gonna ch I'm gonna try to find a. Oh. Uh, Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I, f I forgot. Okay, the the first person who asked the question is Cyberpunk. So yeah, thank you Cy Cyberpunk for asking the question. And the second question is from Codename Moniker. Um, how can someone find connections to other artists who would want to draw for them or with them? Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. So this is about like finding a partner, like artist, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm about to pop off. Go um, ahead, bro. A whole other rant that I didn't even introduce to DD Mark yet. Go crazy, bro. I want to hear this shit. Writers wanting to work with artists. Um, so a lot of times I see, quote unquote, comic book writers or manga writers um, on Instagram or Twitter, and they're looking for partners on like Facebook groups, I mean, or groups, Reddit threads, whatever, to like find I'm an artist. Feel that. <laughs> um, I'm going to actually talk about this more in depth in my next video because it's about how to be a writer for comics. And that's why I thought Brandon was like the perfect guest for that since he's like made a name for himself online as a comic book writer. Um, what a lot of these creators or aspiring creators I see on Instagram who are looking for an artist do is they put out like a thing. They're like, I'm a writer. I need an artist to draw a comic. And then my question is, what have you done in the past? Like, can I read some of your short stories, your one shots or your like Facts. novels that you wrote? And a lot of the times, those quote unquote aspiring writers will be like, well, I never wrote anything. I like need an artist. That means you're not a writer if you haven't wrote anything because a you're comic not. writer would be writing anyway if they wanted to write comics. Facts. So if you're looking for an artist, I think the first thing to do to be taken seriously is be writing anyway. You need like a portfolio to show like, here's some manga ideas I have. Here's some stuff I did in the past. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think an artist take you seriously. Um, but I yeah. think it's, it's kind of hard to find an artist that would do it for free that like loves your story that much. So, you know, money is more option. Yeah, yeah, very good answer. Because like, pretty much what Monitor said is like, if I'm the artist, if you don't write, why, why, would I, why would I work with you? How do I know that you know what you're doing? If you're not paying, right? Especially if you're not paying, especially if you're not paying. 
how are you gonna convince an artist to work with you just simply because oh well because i said i can write it's like if you don't have money your best chance is to like make them fall in love with your work that's your only chance and if you don't have any work if you're not writing like light novels if you're not writing like screenplays if you're not writing like if you're not writing period how are you gonna make an artist that you don't plan on paying want to work with you simply because you said so they don't know you it's a trigger thing for me it's a pet peeve like you're looking for artists but you don't write if you were a writer you would be writing brandon chen he'd be writing i'm pretty sure he has like light novels on like amazon i think he, he writes right you don't just call yourself a writer because you feel like being one that's just that's my thoughts monitor already spoke his which pretty much is echo what i think too third did you have anything else to add to that yeah well i mean unless you're lucky like me you know if you get if you get dms from from brandon chen yeah, <laughs> you can, you can that. yeah i guess my question for third would Soto be flex. like i haven't worked with a separate writer before like I've, I've done it in talks but i've never actually put out a project with one i don't know if you have dd mark but like what do you look for in a writer third like if you were to do this again with a different writer or That's like question. As the- oh okay okay i'm i'm not oh man i'm not quite sure because i've only worked with one writer <laughs> because brandon Chen literally writes every like almost a hit on voice me because um He's so good at writing. But I think um, personally, I want a writer who understands how like an artist work. I don't want my partner to restrict my creativity and I want them to be understanding too. Like if I have like, if I want to change maybe something just really small, I don't want them to completely disagree with my idea. I mm-hmm. think that's about it. And also, I want them to be open about about the work. I want them to be telling me if there's a problem or not. You know, I just don't want them to talk behind my back. Yeah. Well, personally, I've never re- I've never worked with uh, a writer before. Well, I have for commissions. Like I I have this rule when I do commissions that two pages maximum per like client. So like I'm not gonna do a whole thing with you. And I've done a couple oh. commission pages. Yeah. And the thing is like most of the guys who I you know commission pages for they send me like their full script and they'll say something like oh pick two pages you want. Like generally, if I was gonna do like a long-term partnership is that I would want what I just said, a partnership. I don't want like an employer, you know, boss type of thing, you know, where like they're giving me like, oh, I want you, like where there's pressure. I want them to understand working with an artist in the sense of like, you know, timing and stuff like that. Obviously as the artist, you yourself can't slack off, but I don't want someone who will be imposing like unrealistic deadlines on me because you know, that's just the way they want it done, right? Like I said, I want a partnership. Something else I want from a writer is I want to be able to feel like this person a knows what they're doing and b loves what they're doing for me i would imagine one of the biggest red flags in a writer is if there's no love in their work because that usually means it's like fickle or like if they with exception for like brandon chen because i can clearly feel he loves everything he works on but like if there's a writer that wants to do this and this and this oh i can't decide they're just also cool and they can't decide on one then that's you know that's a i would imagine that's a red flag for me i want to feel like you love your stuff and through your love for your work convince me that oh i should love it just as much as you do but then again this is just hypotheticals because i've never worked with a writer this is what was coming off the top of my head that i can think of good answer nice yeah and okay um i don't know if there's any more questions you wanted to ask her but i feel like this episode is running a little long maybe it's just me did you have any in mind i mean we can end it with that yeah uh, okay the last question i have for monitor here is monitor cartoyo underscore maria oh nice name asks what's the main thing needed for manga other than art the story the story <laughs> story no yeah oh, 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 one more time one more time yeah what's the main thing needed story. for longer other than the art story right i think I that we're really on now Whoa. the story hold Whoa. on who's echoing who's that <laughs> monitor has like a sound effects on his uh, voice oh. yeah we'll put oh. the reverb on. <laughs> oh okay <laughs> yeah that yeah that settings on mm-hmm. yeah i just i just saw this question i'm just like is this a is this a trick question is there like more to this because what like if it's not the artist, it's the story, right? Is there any other skill that you need in order to like fucking make a manga? I'm trying to think deep. I'm trying to like think maybe more beyond like just the surface of like the surface level just story type thing. I think like the passion to want to do it. So like I know like one did like Mob Psycho 100 and like mm. One Punch Man, like mediocre art I guess. Um, like he just wanted to do it and get out there and do it. And like the point of this video is like how to get started with comics and manga. Um, you just got to get out there and do it. Um, yeah. I'm sure all of us have been drawing comics since we were little. I've been doing it since I was a kid. I'm sure you two have been doing it since you were kids. Um, the only way you're going to get better at drawing comics and manga is by drawing comics and manga. So 
time you're thinking about drawing fan art or just an illustration in general, if you want to be a comic artist, maybe start practicing comic pages. That's that's true. So uh, I got two uh, trade of thoughts based on what my editor just said. So yeah, obviously uh, the other thing needed for making manga besides art is story, but there's more. Like it's not just those, those two things. Like monitor said, you need uh, the the passion and the drive. That is very important because without those, sometimes you find it really hard. Like you wake up in the morning and you, you know, sometimes you question, why am I still doing this, right? Especially if you're not Japanese, it's a lot harder. It's more of a hustle for us, right? So you need that like determination, even when you're doubting yourself to keep going, you need that. Otherwise you just be quitting all the time. So there's that aspect of it. And like what Monitor said, that also ties into the fact that the main thing that you need to do to make manga, like if you want to make manga is make manga. Like just as ridiculous as the the putting, you know, comic book artists in your bio that you've never made any comics. To me, another thing that's ridiculous is like I'm practicing till I'm good enough. It's like third can tell you this firsthand. But third is very, very, very goddamn good at illustrations. But third Thank can you, tell man. you firsthand. Yeah, no problem. Third can tell you firsthand that making comics is a different, different size, son of a bitch. It's completely oh, yeah. like drawing comic books is completely different from just drawing cool, pretty pictures. I can say, I can say with full confidence, my comics are way better than my illustrations. You go on my Instagram, you might be underwhelmed, but I like, if I wanted to like, if I wanted to show my work to you, I'm sending you to my pages, not my illustrations because they're completely different, right? Obviously if I worked on like illustrations, I get better on that, at, at that stuff. So if you're saying I want to practice and practice and practice, realistically, the way I usually say, I tell people, if you want to practice making manga, make one shots. If you're not ready to make your full blown series, the the story baby you have in your head, make one shots. Those are like the ones you can just make and do away with. But yeah, that's what I had to say. Um, and that's pretty much the last question that we're gonna, you know, touch on today. Unless anybody else has anything else to say, any other questions? No, that's that's about it. Nah, I always just think about that one scene from Spider Man into the Spider Verse where Miles is like, "How do I know I'm ready to be Spider Man?" I just think a leap of faith. You don't. It's leap of faith. W C. I remember that. W the W reference, bro. Yeah. I I, st <laughs> I studied I, sp I, I studied Spider Verse so many times. Yeah, good good I good fucking movie. Good fucking movie. But yeah, that's that's it, man. To be honest with you, this was such a good episode. I think we had the perfect guest for the title that we had chosen. It couldn't have been better. So, th monitor. First off, I would like to personally say, at least from for me and third, third, you can say your own thank you if you want. Thank you, man. Thank you for coming on, being our first guest. Uh, I apologize if it was like a lot of pressure, but you know, you're, you're our first. Uh, we would like to have you back at some point in the future. You're always welcome whenever you want, man. Like you're generally like our friend. So it was yeah. fun having you on. I learned a lot from you, you for real. Like I usually do from your videos. Thank you, dude. Let's hope that you, you get to be in the future episodes because it's, it's actually fun. Sorry if I sound tired. It's 5 a.m. for me. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, let's wrap this up so Third can go to bed, man. <laughs> Third's a man of few words. He says, like, thank you, and I start crying. Yeah. <laughs> um, nah. But, yeah, nah, I appreciate it, guys. I had a lot of fun. Um, great time. I'll be the Chris Broad of this podcast, right? Just keep yeah. Chris Broad. Chris Broad. That's, 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 that's exactly what you're going to be, man. The Chris Broad. <laughs> yeah, man. I like, I like that. I like that. I like that. But, okay, guys, you heard it from Monitor 2. I don't talk a lot. Third just doesn't talk a lot. <laughs> I don't talk too much. I Third don't talk at all. Yeah. Third there should be sorry. all in the comments that you spoke to Yeah. yeah I, I, I'm yeah. really sorry. No, it's no problem. It's no problem. It's no problem. Um, but yeah, man, with that said, I think I'm going to end the episode. Thank you all for watching this episode of the Arcast podcast. Uh, come on down next week and we sure to be able to host you again. God, that was terrible. Let's, let's do that again. No, no, no. That's, that's good. <laughs> I'll probably Stop. still keep it. I'll probably still keep it. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Till next time, it has been me, Diddy Mark, and my host. Third PHP. And our guest, Monitor Comics. Monitor, would you like to say goodbye to the people? Yeah, as always, keep creating, everyone. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.